am Scott Swing, Certified Legal Video Specialist with the Russell Court Reporting. Today's date is October 14th, the year 2003. The time is indicated on the video screen. I am located today at 1 West 4th Street, located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, at the law firm of Womble, Carlisle, Sandridge, and Rice. Testing mic number one, used by the witness. This videotape is recorded on Hi-Fi and must be played back on a Hi-Fi VCR. The audio is recorded at a line input for future references. Testing mic number one. Testimony number two. Testimony number three. This is the end of the audio video test. This is the videotape deposition of Andrew J. Schindler, the case number is 00-L-113. Today's date is October 14th, the year 2003, and the time is indicated on the video screen. The court reporter is Sherry Asplund. My name is Scott Swing, certified legal video specialist. We are both with Russell Court Reporting in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Our location today is 1 West 4th Street in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. At this time, the court reporter will swear the witness for the record, please. Jury, do you solemnly swear the testimony given in this cause is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. At this time, counsel will verbally introduce themselves and who they represent for the record, please. Michael Brickman on behalf of the plaintiffs. Nine Fields on behalf of the plaintiffs. Ted Grossman on behalf of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Mark Holton for R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. You may proceed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Would you state your full name, please? Uh, Andrew J. Schindler. <coughs> and Mr. Schindler, where do you live, sir? In Winston-Salem. And where exactly do you live? 2605 Club Park Road, okay. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Mr. Schindler, as I understand, you've had your deposition taken previously? Yes. Okay. And you understand the basic format we're going to go through today? Yes. Okay. If at any time you don't understand any of my questions, you just let me know and I'll try to rephrase it. Right. And you know, of course, you got to give a verbal answer so this young lady on my right can take it down. Right. All right. Could you tell me, sir, what is your position with uh, Reynolds today, whichever Reynolds entity you are with? Well, I'm the chairman and CEO of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Holdings, and the uh, chairman and CEO of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Okay. And how long have you been in those positions? Uh, since uh, June of uh, 1999, when we were spun off as a public company. And prior there, too, what was your position? Uh, prior to that, I was the CEO of uh, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Okay. And as I understand, you have been with the company since 1974? That's correct, yes. And you have been employed with the company continuously since 1974? Yes. All right. Do you currently smoke, sir? Yes, I do. And what do you smoke? Eclipse. Do you smoke anything other than Eclipse? I will uh, periodically smoke any number of our other brand styles, uh, but Eclipse is my uh, brand of choice. When you say you smoke other cigarettes, do you do that uh, in some manner other than bum a cigarette here or there? I mean, would you smoke as much as a pack of some other cigarette at a time? Uh, no. I mean, we're, we're frequently dealing with new prototypes, uh, new uh, product designs, that type of thing, and I'll smoke those or, you know, once in a while I'll smoke some Camel Lights. But Eclipse is the uh, brand that I Prior, smoke. Yes, sir. Prior to Eclipse, what did you smoke? Uh, prior to Eclipse, it was Premier. Premier. And prior to Premier, what did you smoke? Uh, prior to Premier, uh, I wasn't smoking. I'd, I stopped smoking. We're working backwards here. I, I uh, stopped smoking somewhere 1985 or something like that when I was a plant manager. Uh, and left the tobacco company and went to work for Nabisco, right. which was a part of the corporate family. And when I came back in September of 88, um, Premier was being launched into the marketplace, and I started smoking Premier. So prior, well, I'll let you ask. I'll no, no, no. I, I just want to know which cigarette wouldn't have been even, uh, I guess, prior to your quitting. What cigarette uh, you I smoked... Uh, 
uh, Nows, uh, again, as a plant manager, smoked a variety of brands. We were making Salem's and Winston's and Camel's in the plant that I managed. Did you also um, make the light cigarettes in the plants you managed? Sure. Okay. Did you alternate sometimes between the regular cigarettes and the light cigarettes? Yes. Okay. When you would alternate between the lights and the regulars, did you notice any difference in the way in which you smoked them? No. Did you notice any difference in, <clears throat> uh, I, I guess, how physically you reacted to those cigarettes between a regular and a light cigarette? Uh, in any way? I don't know. Did, in any uh, way, did you notice some difference in you? In me? Yes, sir. Physiologically? Sure. That's a good word. Well, I'm trying to... Uh, you're helping me. I appreciate it. ...understand this. Um, yes, sir. No. Okay. When you have quit smoking, has there been a period of time immediately after quitting when you wanted a cigarette? Are, are you referring to the period of time? Any period what? of time. Any period of time. Um... Yeah, I would, yeah. I mean, I would think, uh, you know, when you quit smoking, there's a period, I don't know, a couple weeks or whatever, where uh, you might have a desire for a cigarette in uh, certain situations. Yes, sir. And did you ever notice when you would switch from a regular cigarette to a light cigarette uh, that you would have sort of that same uh, desire for more cigarettes or anything of that sort when you would do that switch? No. Okay. So that when you would switch from a regular cigarette to a light cigarette, there would be none of this, gee, I need more, I need something else. I'm not getting enough. No. Okay. <clears throat> Let me ask you to sort of define certain things so that we understand each other when we talk. What do you consider to be the public health community? The well, is to form um, <clears throat> it would involve uh, uh, medical personnel or res medical research personnel that work uh, for different governmental agencies at the state or uh, federal level. It would involve people in uh, you know, universities. Um, I think you know government agencies, universities, folks like that. To me, you know, National Cancer Institute, CDC, uh, FDA, you know, Surgeon General. Okay. Any other groups come within the public health community other than? Uh, the governmental agencies you've sort of well, defined I, and given me a broad category of, and the university personnel. Well, medical schools, um, I mean, that's for a technical, you know, I guess uh, uh, every, anybody that's in the medical profession that's doing research or treatment. Uh, Do you consider groups like the uh, the AMA or the American Cancer Society, or the American uh, Lung Association, within the uh, overview of public health community? I would think so, yes. Okay. So all of those similar organizations, like, like yes. I just described? Yes. Okay. There are... Um, a number of groups who have been described as, in some of your own internal documents, anti-smoking groups or opponents of tobacco. Do you have in your own mind, like a, a, some of the people or the organizations that you would consider anti-smoking groups? Objections to form. Um. about names and specific? Well, I don't know whether there are individuals who you look at as anti-smoking uh, uh, or opponents of tobacco industry um, or whether they're organizations as such that you would 
consider under that sort of category? Well, I, I, I don't know how to answer that. I, I think there's a, you know, probably a wide array of people that uh, either oppose smoking or in some form or fashion that would rather it not exist in our society. I think uh, Dr. Kessler seemed to me was anti-smoking. Um, I'm just, I'm not picking on anybody here. Just no. ask, it's just kind of a random. Yes, and I don't want you to think we're picking on anybody. I know you're not. But, uh, but within that category, I'm just trying to figure out who would fit under that category for you. Um, you know, whether there are various organizations you put under that category, uh, various governmental agencies, and just anything of that sort. Objection to the form. The question assumes uh, a category not in evidence. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess you could put in that category the, I guess, the Surgeon General or um, uh, Matt Myers and the, the uh, organization he's with, um, Joe Califano. Uh, I mean, there's just a wide array of people that, that seem to me over time, to, you know, are anti-smoking or oppose the behavior uh, existing in our society. the AMA, you know, it's just a wide array, I guess, of individuals and organizations that have spoken out in various ways about smoking and smoking behavior over time. Do you consider the American Cancer Society within the group of anti-tobacco uh, category? Uh, I would consider an organization that uh, would uh, wish that smoking didn't exist. I mean, oppose, you know, the smoking behavior, wish that didn't exist in our society. If you want to call that anti-smoking, I suppose you could. Do you call it anti-smoking? I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, this is sounding like I'm walking around every day and pointing out anti-smoking organizations and people, which is not accurate. I mean, I recognize that I, I deal with a product that uh, has significant health risk associated with it, and there are a array of of organizations and people in our society that uh, wish it wasn't there. And if in that context, you can call them antis, but I'm not walking around in some obsessive way trying to identify all these antis. Yes, sir, and, and I don't mean to imply that you don't do anything in your day other than <laughs> cuss out the anti-smoking group. Um, I'm just trying to figure out who you put in that category. But, and just so I'm clear, did you put the American Cancer Society in that group? I would, I would think so in the okay. context of what you're sort of framing this. All right. Now, can you define for me uh, light cigarettes, what you put in the category of light cigarettes? Um, well, it would uh, generally be cigarettes whose tar level is somewhere between, you know, seven or so milligrams of tar up to about 12, and that kind of in that range. And could you tell me how you define low tar cigarettes? Um, well, I hadn't thought of it that way. Low, I, to me, low tar would would be anything from lights, which is this range of around seven to eleven or twelve, down to one or two milligrams, which is where now or Carlton or brands like that are. So, to me, that that whole category and principles, sort of low tar or lower tar. Do you use the word ultra low tar when you refer to the, the uh, uh, cigarettes in a certain category within the low tar group that you've just described? Refer to as ultra lights. Ultra lights? Yeah. What are ultra lights then? They would be, they would be um, they have tar levels probably about four up to six or so milligrams. And then the ones that are one to two, what do you, what category do you call those? I guess, I guess ultra, ultra. <laughs> yeah, I guess pe people would say ultra, ultra, ultra low tar. Or whatever. Okay. Do you use the word lights and low tar interchangeably? Um, I don't. Um, 
I'm I've never. I'm catching to the form of the question that it misstates prior testimony. The witness has already testified as to his definition of both of those terms. Do you use the terms interchangeably? If somebody says low tar, they, they could could mean anything in this broad category from one or two milligrams up to 12. So it would depend, on, I guess, the context. Where lights is a very specific designator, or ultra lights, or the ultra, ultra low uh, lights, or low tar. So, yes, sir. when you use the word lights, then do you refer specifically to those group of cigarettes that have, as part of their name, the word lights? Yes, that's how I would think about okay. it. Yes. And, and with that, are there? There are always, when there's a light cigarette, a sort of, I don't know how to describe it, parent brand or counterpart that's not a light version? Do you understand well, you're, my question? You're talking about brand family. Yes, I always so, get confused. Well, you. It, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of different styles in a, in a brand, so we would refer to it as a brand family. So you have well, Winston Full Flavor, Lights, Ultra Lights. You have 85 millimeters, 100 millimeters, and a bunch of styles, and it's going to refer to as a brand family. Yes, sir. But what I'm getting at is whenever there is a light cigarette, is there always a, uh, within that brand family, a counterpart that does not have the designation or name light with it? Um, doesn't have well you right meaning if there's a list Winston light we know there's a Winston camel light we know there's a camel Salem light we know there's right. a Salem Doral light we know there's a Doral is there some light version where there is not a counterpart that that doesn't have the word light next to its name is there a cigarette designated as light that doesn't have a counterpart that that doesn't have the designation light right meaning or I'm is there sure. Well, I, I'm just seeking clarification. One would be, is there a cigarette in the 6 to 11 milligram range that that's sold as, as such and doesn't have a higher tar content counterpart? Another is, is there a brand that is called light and doesn't just have... Want, just the name aspect. I, I don't forget okay. the tar numbers or anything. I just want to know if there is a light cigarette that doesn't have a, like a... Light's designator on it? Yeah. Is that, is no, that no, no, no. Is there, for instance, a X light where there is not also an X? Meaning, is there a, if we were to have Winston light, but you know, we don't have a regular Winston. Do you understand my question? I'm sorry. If uh, it's I'm Let's try again. You have certain light cigarettes, which right. differentiate it from a full flavor version. Right. Is there ever a or is there now a light version in which there is not a full flavor counterpart within the RJR group of cigarettes? Uh, inside of a brand family is what you're, I guess what you're asking me is there a a brand brand family that well, let's take that is there a brand family and when you say brand family you're referring to like Winston Salem. Well, any brand is a, would be a okay. family of Such styles. as Winston, Salem, Camel, correct? Yeah, now. Is damaged. there a brand family that uses the designation or word light in its name where there is not a full flavor counterpart without the word light in it? Um, now has no full flavor. In fact, it. But now doesn't use the word light. Right, and I'm sitting here trying okay, to. So I'm only, only on want the pack. I, Okay, let's try this one sure. more time. Sure. Is there a cigarette pack where there is a light version of the cigarette, meaning like a Winston Light, where there is not a full flavor counterpart, where you use the same first part of the name, like Winston, but don't also use the word light with it? A light cigarette that doesn't say light. No, no, I'm really messing this right, up. Right, let's try again. I'm All not right. trying to be difficult. No, 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 no. I, I'm probably not asking it very well. You have light cigarettes. And as I understand, we'll put it this way. 
the light cigarettes come from or are derived from a full flavor <coughs> version, meaning you first started out with a full flavor version, right. and then you made a light version of that cigarette, correct? Right. Okay. You don't have a situation at RJR where you started out with something light where you didn't already have a full flavor counterpart, not, correct? Not right. That, okay. that, that, not that I know of. Okay. okay. All right. And as I understand... But I could be wrong given the interaction. I don't think so. That I, I think we're on the same <coughs> page, but I think that's correct. And as I understand, that designation of light along with the other name, whether it be Winston or Camel, was a way of differentiating that cigarette from the full flavor version, correct? Right. Okay. And one of the ways in which it differentiated that cigarette from the full flavor version was because it was lower in tar than the full flavor version, at least according to the FTC methodology, correct? Right. Okay. We'll get there eventually. <coughs> what do you understand tar to be as it relates to cigarettes? I've got a throat tickle, honest to God. We'll take a break. I can't believe it. <coughs> Mr. Schindler, we were uh, about to talk about tar when we broke for a minute. What do you understand tar to be as it relates to cigarettes? Uh, what do I understand it to be? Yes, sir. Uh, well, it's uh, you know it's one of the uh, residue components of smoking that uh, uh, is attributed to uh, disease associated. With smoke. Okay. And that <coughs> uh, attribution, whatever it may be, however it may be phrased by the various people, is that sort of uh, uh, something that's sort of commonly understood amongst people? That it is tar that is the uh, s substance or the constituent of, uh, within cigarettes that is the cause? Or it's presumed to be the cause of disease. Um, yeah, I would think so. It's been so uh, significantly discussed and pointed to over you know, decades. I, w I would think that. And as I understand from reviewing some of the material within your documents, internal documents, RJR has had a philosophy of quote, less ought to be better, end quote, when it relates to tar. Is that correct? Um, yes, I think it's driven off of a, um, sort of, as I understand it, not a scientist, fundamental principle of toxicology. And would you also agree with the converse of that, that if less ought to be better, more is probably worse? Yeah, in principle. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons for the success of low tar or light cigarettes is um, what has been referred to as the smoker's universal want for a safer cigarette. Is that correct? The connection to the form of the question. Okay, could you ask me again? Please? Sure. Sure. We have these light cigarettes that are, as we've discussed, low tar, correct? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for the commercial success of light cigarettes has been the fact that everybody wants a safer cigarette, correct? Objection to the form of the question. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know that everybody, everybody wants a safer cigarette. I think uh, the, uh, my, my view would be that the people who smoke, a uh, significant number of them, a majority, uh, 
have concerns about the health risks of smoking. Uh, the, the notion that low tar cigarettes fills a quest for safer cigarettes, which I don't believe that there is a safe cigarette, so uh, we tend to talk about it in terms of uh, potential for reducing risk comparatively. Okay. And, and, and just so we're clear again on language, when you refer to the term reducing risk or a reduced risk, you're talking about something that is at least hopefully safer, correct? Well, I, I, I don't frankly think of it in terms of safer. Uh, people want to say a safer cigarette. I don't believe there's, if you're lighting something up uh, and puffing on it and inhaling it, the, the concept of safe, even the concept of safer applied to that to me is not uh, accurate as opposed to uh, a, a clips, for example, where we make a discrete reduced risk claim may present uh, uh, less risk, okay? Uh, as opposed to this may be safer, I would never say this has the potential to reduce the risk, reduce certain components in cigarettes that are associated with the risk of smoking, a variety of uh, studies to confirm uh, physiological changes, that sort of thing. But uh, I just, you know, I just frankly don't use the term safer. Uh, we don't really use it internally. We talk about trying to reduce risk or components associated with risk. Okay. And, and let me cover there a couple points you made in there that I want to go over with you. In fact, you have testified, I believe, a few years ago that the RJR did not have any evidence that light cigarettes were safer, correct? Objection. If you want to, to lead or impeach the witness with prior testimony, you have to show it to him. Yeah, I'm, you'd have to show me not be uh, difficult here, but you'd have to show me sure. where I said that. I mean, I... Is, is it your position today that light cigarettes are... are that, that, well, let me strike that. Is it your <coughs> position today that RJR does not have any evidence that it, lights are safer? It is, it is my understanding from R&D guys that uh, epidemiology uh, suggests that Low tar or lights or lower tar cigarettes may may have uh, present less risk of lung cancer. Now that's evidence that exists um, out in the you know public health community or out in the you know medical community, as opposed to uh, evidence that uh, RJR through their own research, their own studies, you know generated evidence. Okay. So let's break that so down. I, I don't know of any studies that RJR did relative to risk. What the RD guys talk about is evidence that through epidemiology it's out there in the public sector. Okay. So you are not aware of any evidence within the RJR files or within the, the RJR research that indicate lights are safe. Objection correct? to the form of the question. You may want to restate it. You said within the files. Within the RJR files or RJR research, that well, those are two, se two separate questions. Yeah. Well, you could have outside studies in the files. Right. Uh, Other than the outside studies, there's nothing that y'all have done internally to indicate. I don't research. know of any um, epidemiology or or human studies that our company directly ran to determine uh, risk associated with low tar cigarette. Okay. Now, let's go way back to what I really wanted to talk about. And that is the idea that, that <clears throat> smokers' number one want is a reduced risk cigarette, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you, if you do studies on once and uh, from smokers, you know, uh, kind of consumer research, you will typically find that health risk concerns tend to get at the top of that list. Um, so, you know, percentage-wise, uh, but when you say, the, I think you said number one. Yes, sir. Want yes, to sir. reduce for a cigarette. Our our experience with Eclipse, for example, has not borne that out in the marketplace. 
Terms you're of, talking about because it may not be as commercially successful as you well, want yeah. it to be. Okay. Yeah. But nevertheless, your research, specifically with regard to Eclipse, indicated to you all that smokers, number one want, was a reduced risk cigarette. Objection to the form of the question. Um, I, I, know, I know smokers are, in, in studies we've done, um, people express concerns about health risk. Uh, you, if there's a, I, I don't exactly remember a study where we said, everybody tell me what your number one need is, reduced risk cigarette. If we have one, fine. But I know there's, and generally in uh, consumer research, people express obviously concerns about the health risk, which directly or indirectly implies if you can reduce risk and you've actually validly believe you've done that, it suggests smokers may have a, an interest in that product. Okay. I'm going to show you a document these gentlemen have in just a second. And, and it deals with Eclipse, and it's an RJR document that, that simply states, and I'm assuming this was what you all believed if you put it out, that consumer research has consistently shown that smokers' number one want is a reduced risk cigarette. And while the council's looking, I'll just show you my version. I've got my version yeah. highlighted. We've marked the council yeah. version. That's we don't fine. have another copy. That's fine. Uh, with regard to this document, which is marked confidential and subject to the protective order, uh, and with regard to the testimony regarding this document, which has been marked confidential and subject to the protective order, we would ask that the transcript in this... It's not a highly confidential. It has to be highly confidential, I think, for there to be some sealing of it. Um, and I, we can get the... I, I don't remember yes. it verbatim, yes. and I might be wrong, yeah. and let's I'm just, happy to be safe. let it reflect, you know, yeah. the transcript yeah. reflect what the protective order... But, but what yes. I was referring uh, yes. to earlier, Mr. Grossman, was the fact that it's marked highly confidential. Yes, I understand that. Okay. No, but let's, let's have the transcript reflect that this is a confidential document, and, and it will be treated uh, pursuant to the protective order. Whatever that order is, like yes, this. sir, absolutely. Do you see where I've got that yeah, mark, sir? Sure. And, and that's an RJR document, if yeah, you assume, right. correct? Mm -hmm. And that says, and I assume that to be correct, that your research showed that the number one want of smokers is a reduced risk cigarette, correct? That's what, I know this, I don't mean to complicate this. You can have quite a debate about that. This is a, certainly at the time this was written, that's a belief, I think based on research that people say that are concerned about the risk of smoking, they, wish that the risk could be reduced. Uh, our experience uh, is that smokers, when presented something that uh, may have reduced risk, um, at least in our experience, is not necessarily stimulated conversion in the marketplace. So you have an expressed want or need or desire, but not necessarily one that at least up to now, that people have responded to and, and, in, that, and, in this context. Yes, and, and what I understand you're telling me is that while that research may have shown that that's what smokers tell you the number one want is, that ne doesn't necessarily manifest itself in sales of a product that may, in fact, have that reduced risk, correct? Yeah, in the case of the clubs, that's okay. for sure. But that doesn't mean smokers don't want it. They just may not right. be I, manifesting it commercially. In a given situation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. If you don't mind having my copy sure. back, I apologize. We only have one copy. Um, now, and that's sort of, I guess it is, it's almost rhetorical. I mean, if you could have two cigarettes, identical in all respects, but one is safer than the other, meaning they taste the same, they burn the same, they smell the same, but one is safer or has reduced risk sort of common sense that people go pick the one that it has the reduced risk or is presumably safer. Would you agree? To the, obje objection to the form of the question. I don't know. I used to believe that was the case. I'm not sure. Well, but in, in which it, it would depend on so many variables. What are the variables? Re the re how, do, how do people perceive do they perceive there's reduced risk? Uh, what's the brand? What's what's their whole internal mindset relative to risk? So it's, I used to think that. I'm not sure how clear that is anymore, quite well, frankly. Yeah. And, and let's sort of cover those points. If 
you could have two versions of the same cigarette that a smoker smokes, meaning if he smokes a, a Winston, and that's his brand, and you could give him another Winston, exactly the same, looks the same, burns the same, smells the same, tastes the same, but you could tell him it is, in fact, safer. And you're explicitly... Uh, uh, it, let, it, let me get Excuse me, I need to finish my it, question. Yeah. I need to finish my Wait question, till finishes. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> then it's sort of common sense that person would pick the one that is safer. Wouldn't you agree? Now, I, I object to the form of the question, or, and, and let me state the objection. Um, are you talking about an average consumer, a particular consumer, all consumers? Your question doesn't make that clear at all. Go ahead, sir. Um, okay, can we ask the question again here? Sure. <coughs> and, and counsel, I would ask if you have an objection, simply make the objection as opposed to your speaking That's objection that you're doing. doing, which is inappropriate under the I, Illinois I, rules. No, yeah. it's inappropriate. And I, don't, I don't need you to explain to me okay. what your confusion may okay. be or how you want me to rephrase it, with all due respect. Um, if I can remember. Would you agree that if a person had two choices, two identical cigarettes, his normal brand, and there was another version of it, identical, as I said, except it is, in fact, safer or has reduced risk, and he perceives that as having reduced risk, would you agree with me that he's going to choose the one that has the reduced risk? Objection to the form of the question. What's your, am I supposed to yeah, answer Yes, this? sir. Okay. You, if, um, unless your attorney tells you not to answer, he puts the objection on for the record, you go ahead and answer it, okay. and he'll tell you if he doesn't want you to answer something, and then I'll still try to get you to answer it. Okay. <laughs> Saying you have... And if you don't understand any question, I, I, uh, I ask for rephrasing. Okay. What you're asking me is you have two packs of cigarettes. They're the same color, same graphics, same design. Everything's exactly the same. Yes, sir. They taste exactly the same. Uh, but one of them, you would explicitly tell a consumer that this one here, for whatever reason, has uh, may have less risk to it. That is correct. That's the question. Yes, sir. And your question is, wouldn't everyone choose that? Uh, among the people, yes, yeah, smoking that brand, yes. Yeah. Uh, somebody probably would. I don't know if everyone would. Okay. And, and do you have some idea what kind of person wouldn't choose the safer version? You'd have to go out and test that theory. Okay. I mean, you just you, you just have to. Uh, I, I can see your you know, sort of logic and supposition, but to you know, would you get fifty percent of them, or thirty percent, or a hundred? You're suggesting a hundred percent. They're always. I don't you know. know. The witness. I'm sorry. I just. I don't know what would happen. I know somebody would. I don't know. You know, in this model, would it be everybody or? It, you finish. I mean, yeah. Okay. Do you? And again, I, I realize you don't know for certain. You don't have that crystal ball. But don't you think most, if not virtually all, people would smoke that safer cigarette? Uh, objection to the form of the question and calls for speculation. I, I would think that a lot of people would. I don't know what consumer behavior would be in that exact um, uh, sort of construct. And so the only way you'd know for sure is if you went and did a test with consumers and you know set it up that way, and you'd, then you'd know what would happen. I can you know continually I continue to be a little surprised at what happens when you think consumers might do one thing and they do another. So I w all I would say is you'd have to go test that to find out. <clears throat> um, hasn't RJR done research to indicate that consumers want as low a tar cigarette as possible without sacrificing taste? 
assume there's I don't know. I, I'm, it doesn't ring a bell. Maybe we have, or the company has at some point. It doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Um, let me show you what we will mark as exhibit three. <coughs> This is a May 9, 1978 document, correct? Um, yes. And again, I, I will tell you this came from the RJR files. And, it, and it, you need to look at it. That's fine. But if what I want to reference is on page two. Right. You see the very top of the page under the category low tar? Yes. Would you just read into the record what that first sentence is? Uh, what the first sentence is Just that, read it into the okay, all smoke <coughs> switching from full flavor full flavor brands to low tar brands want as little tar as possible without sacrificing taste. Okay. And, and apparently this is at least what this research at this time in nineteen seventy eight showed to RJR. Uh, I Presuming they're they're not fudging. Well I don't know if this is research or the opinion of the person that wrote this. Okay. In any event, this is within, well, let me ask you this. Do you know who the person is who wrote this, a Mr. Jeffrey Durdue? Dur Dur um, I, no I don't, that doesn't ring a bell. I think I know who it went to. I think it went to Ellen Monahan. And did you know Mrs. Monahan? Uh, Ms. Monahan. Ms. Monahan. Yeah, I, I I've met Mrs. Monahan. Oh, you have? Yes. Yeah, I know Ellen. Um, I, you know, I joined the company in 74. Right. So I. She left and I forget somewhere in the early 90s, I think. But yes, I've known Ellen for years. And, and if you sort of skim through this document, it looks like this is some sort of research because he's referencing so many percent of this and so many percent of that choose this or switch from this. Do you see those throughout the paper? Objections to the form of the question. Well, I'd have, have to read the whole thing to, I mean, well, I mean, if you just skim through it real quickly, you can see that he's given percentages throughout this. I'm assuming he's basing this on some research. If you're asking the witness to comment on whether this is research and then asking him to skim is inappropriate. If you're asking him whether he knows it's research, it's a different question as well. Well, on the first page, since approximately 90% according to us of low-tar smokers come from full flavor brands, we can, as we can assume that, that these are also the ones of full flavor smokers who are priests. I mean, these assumptions, low-tar, all smokers switching from full, all, all. I've never seen any research on anything where all of a group was after something. So to me, it's just, you know, our switching went taste, uh, without sacrificing taste. Uh, then he goes on and just talks about tar numbers. Taste, the monadic test among full flavor smokers, Winston Light draws significantly higher rates than all other four brands, whereas other low tar brands stress low tar and good taste. Um, it, it, it does look. This is 1978. I was, I think, I was in the sales department at the time. I'm just saying that section doesn't. Sounds like an opinion. Okay. Well, that, for whatever reason, all. that person's opinion, based on whatever he was relying on, was to you know the people, Ms. Ms. Monahan, that all smokers wanted that lower tar as long as they didn't have to sacrifice tax. That was that person's opinion within RJR, correct? Uh, that's what it looks like. That okay. was his opinion. It, would you agree, however, that the that there was a universal want for lower tar cigarettes? Uh, well, people are smoking cigarettes today at different tar levels. So the whole uh, low tar or light cigarette began really in the early 70s. It's been around for... 30 years, if all smokers wanted low tar, all smokers would be smoking lower tar today, it would seem to me. Yeah. And that's not the case. It, it, but, but, cause 30 years the, into this. But the reason is, as that gentleman said, is because some people don't want to sacrifice whatever that taste is. 
That's his opinion. I mean, I... Do you have it, some other opinion it, as to why not every... Who knows? It could be mouthfeel. Who knows? I mean, there's a lot of issues here, but... Uh, Do you have any other opinion as to why people wouldn't smoke to a lower tar cigarette if your philosophy that less ought to be better is correct? All right. What's the question sure. now? Let's go back. I'm basically trying to find out why wouldn't people switch to lower tar cigarettes if RJR's philosophy that less ought to be better is correct? I mean, why wouldn't smokers switch? Objection to the form of the question. I would think. And, and lack of foundation. I think taste would have something to do with it. I think the way the cigarette feels, how it, the drag on the cigarette, there's a lot of behaviors associated with smoking. So that, um, that's fine. Now, let me show you one other document on the same line. And we've marked this as Exhibit 4. And this is another RJR um, document labeled 19, now, rather, 1985 Business Analysis, Summary Analysis, correct? Yes. All right. And I'm just going to go to one section, obviously, if you need to look at it for something in particular you may. But if you would turn to page 12 at the bottom, you'll see the page numbers. And there is a section called Detailed Conclusions slash Key Findings at the top of the page that is continued. Do you see that, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the second paragraph under that, would you read that for me, that begins the want? Oh, the want yes, for sir. low tar is universal. Okay. That's what it says. Right. Now, are you familiar with this document? No, I'm not. Okay. Do you know who put this document together? doesn't appear to be on this, so okay. really. This is simply some internal document uh, that is categorized as a, if you look at page one, a management summary of the now business analysis, I guess. Is that yeah. correct? That's what it says. I, I really, there's nothing here that, that I can see that would identify exactly where this came from. And again, if you just skim through this document, you can see apparently they have done some testing, because they've got various numbers here uh, from different, I guess, quantitative analysis that have been done. Objection Would you agree? Objection to the form of the question. Objection to asking the, the witness to skim and draw conclusions from some uh, cursory review. <coughs> what, what are you asking? No, but what I'm basically asking is this just appears to be some research that was done by RJR. Um, and some conclusions they drew from that research. Would you agree? That's all I'm asking. That's what it appears to be, yeah. Okay. Um, document along the same lines, then we can talk about it as a general rule. <clears throat> and we will mark the next document as Exhibit <laughs> That's it. Okay, that's fine. Let me show you counsel first. I only have one copy, I apologize.
Just a little coffee. Yeah. Hot works better than cold. Thanks. Appreciate it. Who are you pulling for tonight? This is on the record, isn't it? <laughs> I'd love to see the Cubs and the uh, and the Red Sox in the uh, World Series. I think that'd be great. Make sure we put nothing but Yankee fans on the jury. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a Yankee. I just think it's to be kind. Of, neat. of course, Boston, if they lost to the Cubs, would really have a psychological problem for years. <laughs> they already have one. But anyway, <laughs> all right. This is a document, uh, Exhibit 5 that is labeled a confidential product research report, correct? Right. And it is dated June 2, 1993, correct? Right. And this is sort of an unusual sort of uh, uh, research. Um, it appears that RGR was looking at possibly using some sort of uh, grain as a filler within mm -hmm. its cigarettes, and you're curious as to how the consumers would react to it, correct? Um. Yeah, I guess that's what's in here. I mean, clearly that's an alternative filler rice right on the cover. Right. On the yes, standard. sir. And if you would go to what is marked at the bottom, page 10. If you look at the top question, the question was, would respondent continue smoking their usual brand if they learned it contained a small amount of toasted grain? Do you see that, sir? Yes. Okay. And the response was, or, or, or the, the percentage of responses, basically was that 95% would accept that cigarette with the, that filler, whatever that grain filler was, as long as... There was lower tar, and you didn't lose taste, correct? I, I'm going to object to the foundation with this document with this witness. I don't know if he's seen the document before or not, but uh, you haven't established what the, do what the witness's relationship to the document is. Okay. Well, he's the head man of this company, and he's an internal document of RJR, so I think I'm allowed to ask him about the I, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not objecting to your asking him about it, but I'm objecting to the lack of foundation with the document. I don't know if you're asking him to interpret a document cold or whether it's a document that, uh, that he was a, uh, an author of or a recipient sure. of or whatever. Sure. Well, I've never seen the document before that I remember. That's fine, but go ahead. Do you, do you see what I, where I read, sir? Right. Is what I read correct, a summary of what I read correct? Um, what you read is correct. Whether or not that would happen, I'd be very skeptical. You'd be skeptical that that would actually occur? No. Now, when you say you're skeptical, are you skeptical of the research that was done, or are you skeptical that would translate in the marketplace? I am very skeptical, excuse me, very skeptical that that would translate in the marketplace. Okay. You're not skeptical as to what this person wrote down as to uh, what his research showed, are I you? Don't, I mean, I don't know the core research. I would 
I don't know who did this. Or no, I guess it was Anita Schism. I would presume that they asked this question and that was the responses they got okay. to a theoretical question. And I assume whoever this young lady is who did this research or wrote this report would accurately report what she found. Would you agree? Yeah, but this is kind of a theoretical question. If you were actually marketing a cigarette to somebody and said, oh, by the way, we have 5% rice in here, even though, let's say, theoretically, it may not taste differently, I'd be willing to bet a number of those smokers would perceive that it tastes differently. Sure. And, and that's interesting. But, 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 but one of the points they're making, though, in here is that people at least are telling your researchers that as long as you can lower the tar and not change the taste, that cigarette would be okay with this. Correct? If you wanted to put rice in it and it tastes the same, it tends to be they contain toasted grain, also the benefit of lower well, tar. If you're reading, you have to actually be loud. So well, I'm reading to myself trying to understand this thing. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. They ask people if we put rice, some kind of toasted grain, I guess is the term they used, right, into a cigarette. I don't know if they told them at what level, and it still tasted the same, and it had lower tar. Would you continue to Would you continue to smoke it? And ninety five percent said yes. They said yes. If what? If it had well, if it had the lower tar, okay, and tasted the same, right. So, and I guess that's sort of the point I'm getting at, is that most people, I mean, if not all people, want a lower tar cigarette under your philosophy, I guess, of less ought to be better, as long as it doesn't impact their taste. Objection to the form, Would you agree? Of, the, objection to the form of the question. Uh, I, I think it's so ambiguous that, it, it, uh, that any answer to that question will not be understandable, quite frankly. If you want to restate it, that's no, fine. No, no, I like it just like it is, and a simple objection would be fine, Mr. Grossman. And the question is? I don't remember. It's too far back now. You, the research you're getting continually, and I say you, meaning I'm talking about RJR, is that people want a lower tar cigarette as long as it doesn't impact taste. There are tons of lower tar cigarettes out there today that taste very good, and everybody isn't smoking them. But, but people may disagree with you on the taste quality. Uh, I mean, they just, it it's just be, a personal matter. It could be taste. It could be perception of taste. It could be all sorts of things. They have all these choices, and not everybody has switched to cigarettes that are uh, lights, for example. It tastes very good. I, I, well, again, taste it, is a very personal and, thing, isn't and it? And, in fact, the tar levels in full flavor have come down to be even closer in approximation in the contemporary time to light cigarettes. So, do you, you think know, that's reality. Okay. And don't you think people want that lower tar as long as they can have a good-tasting cigarette? Objection to the form of the question. Some people do. Some don't. Have, have you got any research that indicates people want higher tar cigarettes than whatever they're now smoking? They're smoking them. But no, no, that's not my point. These people are indicating they'll switch to something with grain if it's lower in tar and tastes okay. What I want to know is, are there, is there research within RJR that says people want higher tar cigarettes? Objection to the form of the question. I, I do not view this research as some definitive uh, sort of validation of your point of view. This well, is, this is asking a bunch of people, if we put grain in your cigarette, would you still smoke it? And followed with questions, of, well, if it's low tar and the taste doesn't change. That's not my question. Now, I'm not that, asking does that mean anymore. that would happen? No, I'm not asking that. I'm let, asking the wit you, let the witness. He's way off. It has nothing to do with my question, counsel. I'm just trying to get him on track. My question to him was, do they have any research to indicate people want Higher tar cigarettes. That was my question. He's still going back to that, that one document that, that I'm not asking him about now. And I don't mean to cut him off, but I just want to make sure he and I are on the same wavelength. That's all. Objection to the form of the question, then. People have uh, 
They smoke full flavor cigarettes, they smoke lights, they smoke altar lights, they have different needs, uh, smokers and, and perceptions of taste, and they select what they want. That's right. My question to you is, I, I, I when you're done, by the way, when you're done with this line, I'd like to take a break. Sure. Uh, sure. <coughs> You've seen some documents, and I haven't given you all the documents, and obviously you know there are lots of documents at RJR that indicate that there's research within an RJR that indicate people want lower tar cigarettes, provided certain other assumptions are kept up. What I want to know is the converse. Is there research at RJR that indicates people want higher tar cigarettes than what they're now smoking? Not that I know of. Okay. Why don't we take a break? Yeah, we